today I'm reviewing the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield SPF. And really quick, I just want to say, I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsor ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out the links below. Click on like the video or share it with your friends to help support the channel. I don't say that very well, but I'll get used to it. Okay. Starting out with some of my sunscreens, because this, to be honest, I'm reviewing this one because it's going to expire soon, so I want to review it, and I'm almost finished with it, so I'd like to review it before I finish it, especially because this one was kind of pricey, so. Uh, okay, so they say, give your complexion a boost of luminosity. This powerful protector features a pearlescent illuminating glow to deliver healthy, lit from within look. Our Envirus screen technology provides 100% mineral protection from environmental aggressors such as UVA and UVB pollution, blue light and infrared radiation, a hydrating antioxidant rich mineral formula nourishes and protects skin while fighting against free radicals that contribute to skin damage. The blue light thing, uh, any mineral sunscreen will protect against blue light as well as a lot of other ingredients such as algae. The blue light thing I think is a hyped term at this moment but if you use a good sunscreen most of the time that protects against uv and uvb rays the blue light is not a huge issue so i know it's a big buzzword these days so take it with a grain of salt so anyway okay my first criteria is packaging uh no issues with the packaging it's got a needle nose uh, dispense at the end of it which is very nice squeeze tube bottle easy for traveling Nice bottle. I like it. It's pretty. And I will say the nice thing is the top doesn't flake off like a lot of these shiny tops do. Okay, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, it does not contain any of those. It's also fragrance free and has no real noticeable scent. A lot of mineral sunscreens have like kind of like an earthy scent to them. This one doesn't have that at all, so that is quite nice because I don't love that scent. I don't hate it, but it's just I don't like it. Uh, okay, in terms of the manufacturing location, this one is made in the U.S., so no issues with that. The SPF is 50, which is what I recommend to use on a daily basis, uh, 30 or above, so this is fits right into that. The UVA protection is a PA with three pluses after it, which indicates above average UVA protection. Um, do I think this can compete with some of the new UVA filters that are chemical out there? Probably not. Uh, it does have broad spectrum protection based on the mineral sunscreen they used. Uh, compared to a lot of new, the new chemical sunscreens, it's probably not anywhere near what those offer, but it is adequate with three pluses, so. Uh, okay, in terms of the filters, we've got 12% zinc oxide. It's great. It offers broad spectrum protection against UVA and UVB, the, the whole spectrum, infrared, blue light, yada, yada. Protects against UVB, UVB, UVA2, UVA1 uniformly. Considered to be the broadest range sunscreen available today. It's also highly stable and non-irritating. So much so that zinc oxide also counts as a protectant as well as an anti-irritant. Can be used with other chemical filters except avobenzone, which degrades immediately when used with zinc oxide. This also contains a small amount of titanium dioxide as well as iron oxides, which give it additional protection. It may not be a whole ton. There's not a lot of those uh, ingredients in there but enough they're probably using those two ingredients for the tint as well okay in terms of the white cast give it a good shake here Oops, don't fall. okay so it's got a liquidy texture to it and it smooths over skin really nicely so this is the glow version they have multiple versions and finishes such as bronze matte original and then the glow version so this has no white cast. It does have a tint to it, which, you know what, on days when I don't feel like putting foundation on, I'll apply this and uh, go with it because it's tinted enough just to even things out without needing any other uh, sunscreen protection. So no white cast issues. The texture of it, I don't love. Um, it does remind me a lot of the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen, but this one just feels a little bit more greasy and a little bit more shiny. And uh, the other thing I'll mention for like reapplication, this one's not going to be my pick if you're going to have to reapply during the day. Um, although I guess it's implied in the name Glow that it's going to be shiny. So I get it. The matte finish is probably a little bit less shiny. 
um, but I just I don't love the fit the liquid in this one feels greasy to me whereas the Tatcha silk sunscreen doesn't feel greasy um, so I just didn't love the texture of this especially when you think about how liberal you need to apply this to get the actual SPF 50 you're gonna have to apply a heck of a lot of this and it's gonna feel even more greasy I absolutely requires a powder to set this one um, no matter how much you want to glow you don't want to look greasy or you know what I mean? There's a difference between glow and grease. And there's a fine line in there. And this one might cross a little bit because you can see just how shiny it is. And and this probably isn't even liberal enough application for SPF 50. Although it does work well under foundation. So that's a nice factor. But there you go. I mean, you can certainly see the shininess on it. Uh, okay, so ease of use, I kind of touched on that. Uh, shiny finish, it's tacky. Uh, if you're the wind blows, your hair will stick to your face a little bit, which I don't love. Uh, it's difficult to get a liberal enough application with this. So that's a main thing, a main point. Reapplication of this during the day is almost impossible. It will end up feeling so thick. It will end up feeling like you have a mask on, and that just doesn't feel good, and it doesn't look good, and it, it's noticeable, so... Um, it just doesn't layer well on top of itself well. So this might be a time for like a setting powder with SPF in it or just going with something totally different or a spray, something like that. Okay, in terms of ingredients that are beneficial in this one, so we've got mica, which isn't really beneficial. It's a tinting and coloring ingredient, but I wanted to mention it. Uh, we've got niacinamide, anti-acne, skin brightening, bear repairing ingredient. We've got bisabolol, which is a skin soothing ingredient. Vitamin E, antioxidant. The version of vitamin E that they used is claimed to help soothe skin as well as redness, so we like that. We've got alantoline, which is a skin soothing ingredient. Silver ear mushroom extract, skin soothing and humectant ingredient. Lipochromin 6, which is a synthetic molecule that has similar structure to A. Tociferol, which is a vitamin E version that works as a potent antioxidant. It's known not only for protecting against reactive oxygen species, but also reactive nitrogen species, which is the uh, protecting properties. And then we've got sunflower sprout extract, which is skin conditioning. Uh, in terms of acne ingenic ingredients, we've got two, dimethicone and then hexylene glycol. So nothing crazy. In terms of animal testing, you know what? I found this all over the place. So on their own website, they say they're cruelty-free. Several other websites state they're cruelty-free. There are some websites that say they were not cruelty-free because they didn't get Leaping Bunny certified. Although they stay on their website, they're cruelty-free, and the ingredients they use are cruelty-free as well. They don't sell in mainland China. Uh, based on all of that, I conclude that they're cruelty-free, but... There are some websites that call that into question because they didn't get Leaping Bunny certified. So from my, what I can tell, looks like they're cruelty-free. Okay, in terms of performance, so I've never got red or burned at all using this. Although on the hottest, sunniest days of the year, this is not going to be my first choice at all. It's a great one for the winter, though, when your skin feels dry or you just don't want to use foundation. It's a nice pick for that. Um because it does feel a little bit heavy and a little bit greasy. So on a sweaty day, it would be way too much for me, um, especially with the reapplication factor on a very hot or very sunny day. You're going to want to be reapplying at least every two hours, and this one isn't easy for reapplying. Um, but overall, it's a decent option in the winter because it is, feels very hydrating and gives your skin a little bit of a glow, which it seems to lack in the winter because it's either dry or red or irritated. But again, on a hot, sunny day, I'd go with a chemical sunscreen just because so uh anyway okay one last thing is price so this is the full size 1.8 ounces 55 milliliters and retails for about 45 dollars which makes it kind of pricey so keep that in mind although it is very similar to the tatcha one which is a little bit more expensive but i do prefer that one a little bit more probably just because it's a little more expensive um okay anyway so i got sunscreen all over this paper just because uh transfers a little bit Okay, so overall, with a 15 being a perfect score, I gave this one an 11. It's decent. It's nice for the winter. Not my thing during the summer, but um, I'll certainly use it up before the end of winter. So anyway. Uh, anyway, interesting from you guys. If you had a chance to check this one out here or not, if you have what your thoughts are, so leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.